What's up? You found yourselves locked on Bulls. I'm Matt. That's Big Dave. Up ahead on today's show, we're breaking down the Bulls' blowout win over the Los Angeles Lakers. Big revenge game for DeMar, for Lonzo, a homecoming game for Caruso, who Lakers fans miss tremendously. He's ours now. Plus, we'll get into some more of the Bulls making up for the lack of Nikola Vucevic. Uh, they looked good last night. So that's all ahead on a fresh Locked On Bulls. Let's go. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here are your hosts, Matt Peck and Big Dave Watson. What's up and welcome in to Locked On Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Matt Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. You can follow my co-host Big Dave Watson at BOW, B-A-W-L Sports. Bow. You can follow us at Locked On Bulls. Shoot us a text or a voicemail at 331-979-1369 or email us LockedOnBulls at gmail.com. Today's episode is brought to you part by RockAuto.com. Reliably low prices, amazing selection, all the parts your car will ever need. Head to rockauto.com and tell them Locked On Bulls sent you. We also thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen every single day. Big Dave, how are you, buddy? Are you ready to break down this, <laughs> this Bulls win over the Lakers that just left me feeling so flowery and bubbly and positive and bright and shining this morning? Mm, that's Yes, you're seeing me stroke my imaginary cat. Yes, <laughs> I am excited. I am ready. I have stuff to yell about, and, and, and I'm going to do it with love, and I'm going to do it with respect, but I'm going to be yelling. So I'm just letting y'all know right now. This is why I'm not sitting so close to this mic, because I'm going to be yelling, guys, and it's going to be just happiness, I promise you, but it's going to be loud. So I'm just letting you know what's about to go down. But yes, I'm ready, man. I'm so happy. Yes. I mean, I feel like we have to start with DeMar DeRozan, who followed up mm. a 35 35- point night against the Clippers a 38 point night against the Lakers the very next day uh you know Mm. after the Clippers game we heard him talking about you know his first game back home in LA after his father passed earlier in February of this year um and, and and the Clippers were a sort of distant uh suitor for DeMar DeRozan when he was figuring out where he wanted to play this offseason but never really seriously considered because they didn't have the means to make it happen the Lakers were the L.A. team that really, DeMar thought, I'm coming home and I'm playing in L.A. I've met with LeBron several times. The way I was described it, it's a done deal. Like, that's how DeMar said he thought about it. He talked about it in podcasts, you know, over the last couple of months. He talked about it after the game last night. He thought it was a done deal. Instead, the Lakers pivot. They get Russell Westbrook instead. And so, mm-hmm. you know... it in spite of the fact that DeMar said all the right things, like, you know, I I learned that it was a business or I relearned that it was a business and no hard feelings. He certainly played last night that there may be a little bit of hard feelings and he let the Lakers have it, Dave. Have it, Matthew. From beginning to end, he let them have it. Let me do it. Let's deal with the free agency first, Matt. The reason, and this is my opinion, the reason they went with Russell Westbrook over DeMar DeRozan was star power. That's the reason they went with him, because Russell Westbrook is an MVP. Russell Westbrook is a a legitimate, straight-up, bona fide star in this league. He is a monster, triple-double machine. He is awesome. He brings more star power to L.A. You know what I'm saying? He brings more eyes to it, and it looks nicer. Like, oh, LeBron team and Russell Westbrook? And Anthony Davis, that sounds more vicious than LeBron teaming up with DeMar DeRozan and Anthony Davis. It sounds more vicious on paper, but it ain't played on paper. It is played on the hardwood. And on the hardwood, DeMar DeRozan is whooping your punk asses constantly. 38 points, 6 assists. And he's doing it so efficiently, Matt. The only bad shots I saw him take were the last two when he was trying to get 40. That's the only time I saw him take bad shots. And the reason he took them is because he said Zach was trying to get him 40. And he was like, man, I'm tired, Zach. Let me chill, dude. Like, I just need to rest. 
He put on a clinic, Matt, a mid-range clinic. This is why I'm so hyped about this. It's because when you play the Lakers, I don't care when you play them, you play the Lakers, the league is watching because the Lakers are always the bar. Always. Every year, the Lakers are the bar. I don't care where the Lakers are. I don't care if they suck. I don't care what's going on. The Lakers are the bar. That's what people pay attention. Nobody was picking the Bulls to win this game. I don't want to hear this trash of people talking about LeBron was there, he was missing, and the day was that We ain't had Vucevic. He was gone. We ain't had Patrick Williams. He was gone. It was Kobe White's first game back. Didn't matter because DeMar DeRozan said, this is my time, and I don't like none of you, and I'm taking everything out on you tonight, not tomorrow, tonight. And he took it out on them Lakers, man, and it felt so Good. This is the most crap you're going to see me talk. I promise you I won't be this way tomorrow. I'm just getting it out my system now because I know what this game means. This is a league on notice game, guys. This is a league on notice game. And DeMar DeRozan put the league on notice that he is that dude. Let's go. <laughs> I'm hype, Matt. Wow. God, I, lo- I love Dave, <laughs> After awesome bulls, this is great. We're, like we're just discovering new new layers to ourselves, Dave. Even though that we, yeah, yeah. we've been close <laughs> friends for three years now, we have been spending all of that time just watching terrible bulls basketball, and now it's like, ooh, ooh I just got some tickles ooh. just listening to the rant about how awesome Jamar is in a Bulls jersey. Um, look, I, like I think it's, I, I think it says something too. And you mentioned, you know, the comment about, you know, he said, yeah, Zach was telling me, go for 40, go for 40, 40. And I had to tell Zach, hey, bro, like, I've been balling a lot today. Yesterday, I'm a little tired. Mm -hmm. Zach Levine, in his own right, had a pretty awesome game last night. You know, was was feeling it from three, six of 13 from downtown for a 26, Mm -hmm. five and five stat line. On any night last season, that's the headline. Zach Levine is Zach Levine again. But more and more, we're seeing that DeMar DeRozan is that guy. And it's like, I, I'm not, you know, officially declaring DeMar is 1A and Zach is 1B. But we've seen plenty of examples of that in Bulls victories. And you know who's totally okay with it? Zach Levine. This is right. a team full of guys who are unselfish, have chips on shoulders, and want to win. And, the, like, the thing that's the craziest to me is, the, the fact that Zach Levine having 26, five and five is an afterthought. And the person who's happiest about that is Zach Levine is even crazier. When you think about the fact that this is a contract year for Zach mm. Levine, there are things mm. on the table for him. Like if he wows people with his stats this season, with his numbers this season as a second all-star appearance, and then maybe gets that all NBA slot recognition. You're talking about, tens of millions of dollars of difference on the contract that the Bulls slide Mm -hmm. across the table to him next summer. And he doesn't care. You know what Zach Mm -hmm. is happy about right now? DeMar taking the pressure off and the Bulls winning. Yes. He is also playing like Matt, like he plays for an organization that he trusts is going to do the right thing by him. Don't, Don't, I don't want people to get that lost in that either. Because you mentioned those that tens of millions of dollars. Nothing about this organiz- about um this front office now says they're going to be trying to shortchange Zach Levine when that offseason comes up. Everything about them says we're going to do you right and we're going to look out for you and take care of you because you allowed us to go out here and put a team around you. That was Zach Levine saying it was okay to do because Zach Levine could have easily been like, screw that, give me my money. I want mm-hmm. to get paid. He mm-hmm. said no. I want to win. I got mm-hmm. money. I got all that. We see, I talked about his cars on here, how it looked like a damn spaceship. He got money. It ain't about that. What he ain't have was a four-game winning streak. What he don't have is playoff experience. What he don't have is knowing what a winning record in the league feels like. That's what he don't have. So now he has to work on getting those things together. Guess what? Four-game winning streak, take it out the first four games. Done deal. You want a winning team? You're 10 and 4. And now you're number two in the East, looking like the best team in the East right now. They look vicious and they look mean. And Zach Levine is a huge part of that, Matt. Look how smart he's playing. Look how fluid he is out there. When they are trying to double team, that play when he got the ball and he almost stepped out of bounds coming up, and there were three Lakers back. 
and none of them could crowd Zach Levine because they all were worried about the shooting of Alonzo Ball and DeMar DeRozan. And he just said, oh, I'm just going to baseline and cock this back and dunk this joint on you. Why did that happen? Because of the team that they have put together. Zach Levine is so happy. Have you seen him smile this much before? We oh. seen, we've watched Zach for years, Matt. Why have you seen him smile like this? Dude has a beautiful smile, and we didn't know he had one until about a month ago. Uh, no it's, it's awesome. And it's that that positive energy you can tell is just seeping through this team already, and it's crazy. We talk about developing offensive chemistry, Billy Donovan's comments, like it's going to take a while. Whatever. The just like familial chemistry of these guys already. This is a brand new roster. A lot of these guys first time playing together uh, ever. Uh, some of them yeah. not not for the first time since, you know, like, oh, yeah, Damar and Vooch were teammates for a season in college. Like, they all – like, Vooch was texting him on on the, you know, the the team yes. text thread after they say, yeah. great game, guy. And there's right. just hugs everywhere. I, I want to say this quickly, and then I, we, we got to read an ad, and then I also want to move on to the game that Lonzo had. But sure. Damar DeRozan has become the official free hugs spokesperson of the Chicago Bulls franchise. Uh, and I, uh, there are hugs flowing everywhere. And you know this about me. I am a hugger. I am a hugger. Oh, you know I love I hugs. Too, yeah. I love the positive yes. energy that they mm -hmm. that they send out, that they bring in. Damar is hugging everyone. Zach Levine is yeah. smiling all the time. And we're 10 and 4. <laughs> hugs, hugs for everybody. Hugs for everybody. Matt knows I love to hug. It's one of my things. It's my love language. It's hugging it's on one people. One of the first things that bonded us. Things. Yes, this is true. This is true. Hugging is what we do. It's how we get down, man. So, yeah, it's just great to see, man. It's so much fun, and it's so good to see, and the chemistry is mwah. So, you know, okay, um, a great win over to talk about it a little bit more. But, you know, after back-to-back -back games like that, DeMar DeRozan putting in work, he might be a little sore today, Big Dave. He is 32 after mm. all. Maybe there's a product out there for him that a lot of professional athletes out there use to deal mm -hmm. with uh, some aches and pains and some muscle treatment. What's it called? Look, man, I don't just wear this jersey because, you know, I look awesome in it. I wear it because I am a professional athlete in my mind. And so the reason I do that in my mind, I know that, man, if I'm being a professional athlete, I'm going to need something to take that stress off my body after getting out there and playing those 48 minutes on the sticks on PS4. My hands are cramped up. Oh, I'm trying to win a championship and bring a championship home to Chicago. Well, guess what? Some people have created something it's for people like me and especially and more importantly for people like you who work hard every single day in your life. For people who are athletes, for people who are postmen, for people who are fire firefighters out there working hard, we got a device for you, man. And it is the Gen 4 Theragun. You need this in your life. It is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. And it is as quiet shh, as an electric toothbrush. It doesn't just feel good. It gets to the source of the pain by releasing that tension. Using Theragun's signature percussive therapy, which goes 60% deeper than the vibration alone. And guess what? The, o the OLED screen... And the design makes you feel like you're holding something from the future. All right? It's just like, man, this is crazy. I don't see Michael J. Fox out here. But that's what? It's happening right now. So just go to their site and check it out. And the Theragun app learns your behaviors and suggests guided routines for you. So if you don't know what you're doing, they got your back on that too, guys. So try Theragun for 30 days, starting at $199. You heard me right. $199 for all of that. Go to therabody.com slash locked on right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash locked on. Therabody.com slash locked on. Now. <laughs> All right, moving along. More to talk about in this Bulls win over the Lakers. Big Dave, back early on this season, it was what, like their second or third game of the season, Lonzo Ball has a triple-double against his former team, the New Orleans Pelicans, and a Bulls win. And after the game said, yeah, you know, nothing personal. Like, no, just just another game. Glad I played well, but just another game on the schedule, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. And then he comes <laughs> in the Staples Center, 
<laughs> and it's like, yeah, I think that whole just another game thing after the triple double against New Orleans was uh, what's the word? Uh, bullshit? Because oh my god, Lonzo Ball, I was getting ready. I teased it yesterday to come on today and talk about the issue of Lonzo Ball not being able to hit the broadside of a barn inside the three point line, shooting great from downtown, mm. can't hit a mm. shot mid range. His floater's not working. He has a little like free throw line step back that's not working. Hasn't been very strong finishing at the rim. And, you know, the, the numbers back up the eye test there. If you look and break down his shots, like zero to three feet, three to 10 feet, 10 to 16, 16 to 20, bad, 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 bad. And I was right. watching last night and I was like, okay, he got a couple of good finishes at the bucket, but mostly still just a barrage of three pointers, seven of 10 mm-hmm. again. I think it's the second time this season Lonzo has been seven of 10 from downtown in a game yeah. to go along with eight assists and seven rebounds, not to mention. Uh-huh. Just tenacious defense. Shout out to Jack Black and Kyle Gass. Tenacious defense <laughs> all night long, even guarding and frustrating Anthony Davis for crying out loud. Mm. And like, I was like, you know what? Bron- or, or yeah, Lonzo can't make anything inside the three point line. And it might not even matter because every other facet of his game is so darn impressive right now, Dave. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, like for people who watch the game within the game, he pleases you so, so much. And this game that he had against the Lakers was for the people who just watching the stats, who just watching that, the this, this stuff for the highlights. He gave you that game as well. So the fact he satisfied both those sides of people was just amazing. It means something to him when he plays the Lakers, Matt. They showed his stats when he plays the Lakers. That dude always balls against the Lakers, all right? He means it. He knows what it means to go back home and play against the team that drafted him, that kind of traded him. I'm not going to say gave up on him because, like he said, dude, it was for Anthony Davis. Like, what do you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't trade me, you know, for no trash. You traded me for Anthony Davis. Like, okay, that makes sense. But still, you trade, you traded him, and I'm sure that weighs in his mind because he felt like you kind of gave up on him on those kind of things. But whatever. He looks great in this Bulls uniform. He looks amazing in it, Matt. Matt, he was acting in a way we hadn't seen him like that before. He's hitting threes and dancing. He's hitting threes and talking to the bench, yelling at the crowd. He's high-fiving everyone. He meant something to him to play this kind of way against this team. And, I mean, he was the best point guard on the floor. (laughs) Like, And that's saying that a lot, okay, because Russell Westbrook was out there and playing solidly except for those three-point shots. But he was solid in the beginning, but he did not, he could not continue it. Lonzo Ball continued it all game. Matt, that play, when he got that ball and without even looking, he threw it all the way down the court to DeMar DeRozan perfectly. Dude, it was dude. amazing to me. Amazing. And more I, impressive. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just this one right here. More impressive than that one to me was the pass Zach Levine threw him. And the reason it's more impressive is because you watch Lonzo tell him where to throw him the ball. You watch it. Watch what you see. You see him say it like, no, put it here. And Zach literally just like, okay. And he put it right there like a football pass for an easy lay-in. And you saw them talk to each other about it, how it happened afterwards. Lonzo is a coach on the floor in all facets of the game. And Matt mentioned his defense. He's Like you said, like I talked about last time, man, when you got a great defender on your team, I don't care if perimeter or interior, it's going to improve your team defensively everywhere because the mm-hmm. man can guard all five positions. He guarded Anthony Davis, man. They frustrated that dude to no end. They put that dude in jail. They frustrated him to no end, man, and Lonzo Ball was a huge part of that incredible game and incredible shooting what's he shooting now man like 44 percent from the three-point line like it's something yeah. ridiculous like that he is he is insane he's been insane and it's been beautiful to watch that one full court pass that you mentioned i mean we we've seen lonzo make some several just brilliant full court passes that have given the bulls easy transition buckets already through 14 games this season and it seems like he outdoes himself each time there's a new one. Each time there's another one where you're just like, wait, okay, I, I, I didn't even process that Lonzo had the ball as I'm watching it on my television screen and, and the Bulls are dunking it. Like, how does he process it that fast? Because he got the rebound, and as he got the rebound, he was facing his own basket. 
And then in less yeah. than a second, that's not an exaggeration, in less than a second, he had somehow mm-hmm. turned around and flung a perfectly placed <laughs> full court pass to, DeRo- to DeRozan, who, and like DeRozan and Zach, they learned quickly. Leak, if we look like we're about to control this rebound, head out. Because yes. either Lonzo's getting the board or a quick pass to Lonzo from whoever got the board, and we got an easy two. We're not going to let the defense get set. We're just going to sprint and assume that if I just put my arms out like this, the ball will land there because Lonzo's yeah. that good. And, oh, here's a layup or here's a dunk. But you mentioned also the pass that Zach Levine had to Lonzo, which was very mm-hmm. similar, like transition – like three quarter court length pass from Zach Levine that was well placed to to Lonzo Ball. Lonzo finishes an easy one at the rim. That is one example of many, I think, of the ways in which Zach Levine's teammates are rubbing off on him in positive ways. His mm. new teammates, Zach Levine, like uh, our, our pal Mark Gay uh, from from Bulls HQ. Put you know, put the video of that uh, Zach pass up on Twitter. It was like I might be uh, you know a prisoner of the moment right now, but that might be the best pass that Zach Levine has ever made mm. in his entire career. Because mm. Zach Levine has not ever been that kind of player who does he he he, right. he doesn't think full court pass, easy transition bucket. We we right. have criticized him at times, rightfully so, as being a player that tends to have tunnel vision and is not see mm-hmm. the full mm-hmm. floor and. Mm-hmm. The ways in which he can see Lonzo read the court and make a pass, Zach saying, I, why can't I do that? The way that he's seeing yes. Lonzo and Alex Caruso D up guys yes. and saying, yes. well, why can't I do that? I mean, mm-hmm. it like we loved Zach Levine, the player that turned himself into a star over the last couple of years. It, I mean, it's exponential, the love and appreciation that we should have for already through 14 games the better version of Zach Levine that we're seeing because his new teammates are all teaching him how to be a better player. Mm, that's a great way to look at it, Matt. And also, just to touch on the teammate thing, Lonzo Ball talking about Alex, Alex Caruso and saying he's the best teammate I've ever had. It's been 15 games. And he's like, this is the best teammate I have ever had. He's been in the league four years. He's like, nope, it's well, him in 15 games. They, they overlap for a little bit when Caruso was doing a two-way with the Lakers before Lonzo got traded. I feel like maybe they overlap for a brief stint there. Maybe. That's a good point. Maybe they did. I have to go and look. I have to go up and look and look and see when they overlap. But I took that as he's talking about now. That's how I took it. Like he's yeah. talking about now the best teammate I've ever had and played with. Because even if that's the case, they didn't play together. You know, they weren't playing together like that because Caruso still wasn't that dude yet. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like <sighs> amazing that that he's feeling this way though. That even if that even if LA has something to do with that, that he's like, this is the best teammate I've ever had, and I don't want to play without this guy. This guy on my team, and I also like Lonzo, Matt, saying things like, "We feel like we're, we're one of the top teams in the league." Period. You know what I'm saying? Like, we feel like we're that team. We He's like, we got a lot of work to do, and we still right. got stuff we got to fix. But, dude, yeah, we feel like we up there. I liked it when he said, I feel like I'm one of the best shooters in the league. See, I, li- I like that kind of talk because, for me, it's not confidence. He kind of might be. He might be one of right? the best three-point shooters in the league now. <laughs> you don't have to – listen, just look at the numbers. The numbers will tell you he's not lying to you. He's telling you the truth. I like that because, for me, that's not cockiness. That's confidence because he's not saying they're like, what? We the best out here. He's saying they're like, mm-hmm. no, I think we one of the best teams out here. That's the mindset you got to have when you out here every day and you performing out here. He ain't saying he didn't say we are the best. He said we're one of the best. He didn't say right. I'm the best shooter in the league. I'm one of the best shooters in the league. There's a difference to this, man. But I like the confidence in Lonzo. And I like what you said, Matt, the confidence in the other things he's instilling in these players on the team. All right, we want to talk a little bit more about this game. I know I, I want to touch on Derek Jones Jr. You wanted to touch on Tony Bradley again. We'll do that yeah. in just a minute. Yeah. But first, if you were watching that Bulls-Lakers game, and uh, I know it was a late one. We got one more late one on deck. We got Bulls-Blazers 9 o'clock on Wednesday night. If you're up anyway, uh, maybe put some bets on the game. Make yourself a little bit of money. 
put a same game parlay down on on Zach Levine's points or or Dame Lillard made threes. You can do all kinds of fun stuff, and you can do it at one place. It's called Bet Online, Big Dave, who are back mm. and better than ever with their new web interface for the start of the NBA season. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online oh, remains your number one spot for all basketball and football action this season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website and sign up today to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. So sign up with an account, put 100 bucks in with that first deposit. They're going to give you 50 extra dollars to play with. Just use promo code LOCKED ON to receive that sign up bonus. From basketball, football, baseball postseason, that's over. NHL, boxing, UFC, right <laughs> down to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online. It's where the game starts, y'all. Promo code locked on for the 50% welcome bonus. Ooh, the silky smoothness of it. Look here, y'all. I know what you want to talk about. As much as I want to talk about these bulls, as much as we want to talk about Lonzo, you want to talk about one thing only, car parts. I know what's on your mind. And guess what? I've got the medicine for you because I know you're like, man, I need a place where I can get the parts that I need. But I do not feel like going outside because it is cold. It is Game of Thrones cold out here. And it's about to go down. Well, guess Winter what? Is coming. Here's something beautiful you can do. <laughs> you can go to rockauto.com. So don't spend 30%, 50 even 100% more for those same parts from that chain store or that dealership. Just go to rockauto.com. It's a family-owned business serving those do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. And they have reliably low, low, low prices for every single customer, all right? All the parts you can eat, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil. Even want some new carpet? Guess what? They got that for you. So all you got to do is go to their easy-to-use website and find you a solution today to all your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see those parts that are available for you and your car or your truck. And make sure you write locked on in there. How did you hear about us section? That's locked on. Write it in there. And then how did you hear about us section? So they know that my main man, Matt, and Big Day sent you. Amazing selection. Reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need. Sing it with me because it's been a week and the bulls are whooping everybody's behind. Rock auto. Com. Let's go. <laughs> go, 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 go. Tear out in here just, just for a second. The Rock Auto Reads are back, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Getting off a cliff. Uh, okay. Big game. Um, yes, I know we talked about Tony Bradley having kind of a rough integration into the starting center spot in place of Vooch while he's out in health and safety protocols. Um, we saw more, more bad and a little bit more redeeming somewhat of the bad again against the Lakers last night. What, what did you think about Bradley's game? Oh, uh, I was actually, I was proud of Tony Bradley and that's okay. the truth. And yes, I, he absolutely started off wrong. <laughs> he started off wrong. They went to him early and they were going to him often early on. And they would just, and not to go to him to score or anything like that, they were just like, hey, here's a wide open layup. Here's the basketball. And he could not, for some reason, hold on to the basketball. He just, mm -hmm. it was just falling through his hands. You know what I'm saying? He was turning it over. I believe he had two or three turnovers early on uh, to start the game. But, and everybody, I, and rightfully so, everybody was losing their minds about Tony Bradley and saying, get rid of this dude. Why Both is he Twitter here? had their torches and pitchforks, man. Oh, my goodness, man. And I felt like I was the guy standing in front of the barn. Like, guys, wait, 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 guys. Not yet, all right? Not yet. Just please. No, not yet. And the reason I felt that way is because I was looking at him on the other end of the floor, Matt. And I was looking at the frustration he was causing Anthony Davis. Because every time Anthony Davis was getting the ball, those long arms of the law that Tony Bradley has 
were were a problem for Anthony Davis. Watch, just watch that. Watch the defense he was playing on him early on in that game. I like what Tony Bradley did, though, guys, because we're used to seeing guys for this Bulls organization over the years who who start off like that continue to be like that. Mm-hmm. Tony Bradley didn't do that. Tony Bradley started that way, came back in the third quarter, and was immediately solid on both ends of the floor. He started going to the rim with force. You know what I'm saying? He started actually laying the ball up and saying, hey, my arms are long. <laughs> like, I can actually do this and lay the ball in. That's all I wanted. I didn't. Nobody wanted him to be Vooch. I didn't want him to score 10 points. I didn't even want him to score eight points. I just wanted him when he gets the ball, a layup comes, and he puts it in. You saw mm-hmm. it continue throughout the game in that second half, Matt. Once he started rolling as far as getting that layup, then the other things came. Then the offensive rebounding started. Then the putback started. Then the defense started. Then the play, I can't remember oh, what play it was, man, but he got that block and he ran the floor. I mean, he sprinted mm-hmm. down the floor. And what was important about that was the defense had to com- had to collapse on him because he was running the floor. What did it do? It left Lonzo Ball wide open over in that corner for a three-point shot. Cash money is an army better yet a Navy. It is a beautiful thing when Tony Bradley can play with confidence. And that's all I want from him, man, is to him right. to realize he's seven feet tall on both ends of the floor and to just play with confidence. So I want to give him some kudos for coming back in that second half and man, and uh just being better. Yeah, I, you know, I think his poor starts in his starting lineup starts so far have kind of I don't know, maybe implied in some way that he hadn't you know, uh adequately psyched himself up for, you know, seizing the moment, being, you know, not afraid of that moment and rising to the occasion. And as you said, good for him for bouncing back from some poor starts. Uh, as the starting center on this road trip and and having some nice moments in the second half of these games. Uh, and like you said, like, hey, simple pick and roll stuff. Hey, catch the ball, put it in the hoop. Like, you, yeah. you could, you know, you're not Boban, but you're pretty damn close. You, you could put the ball in the hoop without even jumping. Like, just... Yeah. Um, but we also saw last night more of what Billy Donovan talked about, which is a super small ball lineup with Derek Jones Jr. as your backup five. And let me tell you, I love this lineup. I love <laughs> Derek Jones Jr. as our backup center. And look, when we get Vooch back, that will be a wonderful, wonderful thing. But his absence has forced Billy Donovan to explore a bunch of different stuff. And like you always say, Billy is not beholden to anything. No rotation, no player, no minutes, no nothing. But I think because of Vooch's absence, he stumbled upon this like, hey, Derek Jones Jr. at the five in this super small lineup gives us all kinds of switchability and flexibility on the defensive end. And Derek Jones Jr. is proving to us that he is confident roll into the rim. He's confident playing some pick and roll offense. Like he was six of seven from the field last night. And I think three of those six made field goals were in ones where he was finishing mm. through contact on slip mm. screens and pick and rolls. And it's like good for Tony Bradley for fighting back and showing like, I'm not going to roll over and die. Cause I had a bad first quarter, but athletically speaking, Derek mm-hmm. Jones jr. Offers Billy Donovan something that, that Tony Bradley does not when it comes to the different ways that he can be potent offensively and offers you switchability that Tony Bradley certainly does not because you're not sending Tony Bradley out to guard anybody on the perimeter. Derek Jones Jr. can essentially guard one through five. Yeah, no question about it, Matt. And he's been awesome out there. And I love how Billy is just using both of them because he's starting Tony Bradley because, like I said, you're going to have – you're going to play a bunch of centers in these next few games. So you're going to, you, you're starting him off against, you know, big centers. You got, you got Davis, you just contended with. You got Zubak, you just dealt with. You got uh, the MVP coming up. You know what I'm saying? You got Nurkic, who you're dealing with. Like, you've got big men to contend with to, in your starting lineup. So he's starting the game with that. Just because that's how you start, it doesn't mean that's how you're going to finish. Yeah, and Derrick Jones Jr. has shown you. Once Tony Bradley has come in and done his thing as far as 
wearing guys down, you know what I'm saying, just using his size and things like that. Derrick Jones Jr. coming in and using that athleticism that you talked about, Matt, and being an irritant on defense. And what I like also, Matt, is he knows he's got six fouls too because Derrick Jones Mm -hmm. Jr. is going to use them fouls, baby. And I like that because he's like, dude, he ain't out fifth. He got fifth, five fouls, all right? And all of them earned. (laughs) All earned. But he had two and ones also. I need him to make the free throw. But he had two and ones also, which I also like. But the rebounds he was getting, Matt, the the, the swats, when the big man is bringing the ball down low, that is little man territory, all right? That ball all don't belong to you when you're a big dude and you bring it down low. So having guys like Derrick Jones Jr. who understand that kind of thing, and also Derrick Jones Jr. with the help defense I like also, Matt, because his athleticism, allows him to have that kind of help defense when guys are posting up trying to make that one-on-one move Derrick Jones Jr. come mm-hmm. over there and swat that and throw it out of bounds we've seen it this season we see him do that so yeah the way Billy Donovan is using Derrick Jones Jr. Matt you are dead on he it has been awesome like you said he's guarding all five position and kudos to Derrick Jones Jr. and we see why uh our tourists was high on this dude for years yeah, and because you brought it up, that's uh, you know I want to finish up in just a few minutes here. But the other thing you mentioned the health defense, and we did see Billy Donovan kind of get at Tony Bradley at one point in the second half when he was giving Anthony Davis a little bit of space, and Anthony Davis started just knocking down a couple of his elbow Mid-range. jumpers that are just yeah. in his bag, in his bag, in, yeah. and and Billy Donovan was like, "Dude, don't give him that space. Get up in him because guess what? We have some of the best help defenders in the league." And they got your back. If Anthony puts the ball on the floor and beats you, if he gets by you with a spin move or, you know, an up and under, whatever, we're going to help. So do, do not give him that 18 footer for free. Get up in him. And you saw the Bulls as a collective unit just pester the ever loving crap out of Anthony Davis last night. Didn't get his first field goal until like the final buzzer of the first quarter. I think he had four mm. shot attempts at halftime. He ended up with 20 mm. points, went to the foul line a lot, parentheses, Lakers 31 free throws, Bulls 11. That's L.A. for you. What? Um, yeah. Wow. Thir- 31 <laughs> I didn't realize to that. 11. 31 wow. to 11. What? And hey, they lost about what? Wow. But, <laughs> but you know what they did do for us is they gave Anthony Davis the toss. It was a frustrating night for Anthony Davis. Kudos to Derrick Jones Jr., to, to Bradley, to, to Lonzo, everybody who was holding their own and making it an uncomfortable night, giving all kinds of double teams at Anthony Davis, who I think May was like, dude, can somebody please do something here? Maybe it was yeah, frustration yeah. night for Anthony Davis because his postgame comments, he was like, we suck. We like He clearly yeah. misses LeBron and is sick of being the guy out there right now for them. They got a lot of problems to figure out. But yeah. the fact that you could take – a matchup like that where any Bulls fan with a lick of sense is is coming into that game last night being like, oh, dear God, this might be a game where, like, Anthony Davis puts up 40 and makes it look easy because this Bulls team is so, you know, understaffed with their big men right now. No. Right. It was like death by a thousand cuts and all of these Bulls guards and wings being like, hey, Anthony Davis, hey, Anthony Davis, hey, Anthony Davis. <laughs> Made nothing easy on him. And it was a pleasure to watch as much as anything the Bulls did offensively. Yeah, man, they they swarm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think the bitch mob should be called the hive. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because they're, they're, they're like bees. I'm serious. They're like bees out here. You know what I mean? Like, they're like just, just those flying insects that just continually annoy you. And I think that's beautiful how you said it. Death by a thousand cuts. That's really what it was, man. Just the continual annoyance. It's not one swift blow. It's just a constant shing, 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 shing. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's annoying to big men especially. And I'm telling you, Anthony Davis, after that third, he didn't want to play no more. <laughs> he didn't want to play, dog. He didn't want to play. the bull. And that's why people are like, what, well, Davis got kicked out. Like, bull, the Bulls were whooping their behind during Anthony Davis' time on the floor. It was, mm-hmm. He just happened to not yeah. be there and then to be there. Like I, The Bulls were up, nothing. what, like 17 when he got that second technical? I think? Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We were still killing him. And it was our ball. It was our yeah. possession when he got kicked out. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, no, I don't want to hear that stuff, man. I don't want to hear that stuff. It was it was a true, beautiful beatdown. And something the Bulls hadn't done since, what, 2011, I think they said, was win both games in L.A., playing the Clippers and playing the Lakers. And it was on a back-to-back, 
All right. They were on a back to back. You in the same stadium. And it was a knockdown tough game against the Clippers. That was a physical game. Mm -hmm. All right. That wasn't an easy game. So to go from a physical game and the very next night to come out and play a more, more finesse, fluid transition game because your defense was leading the offense. The Bulls can beat you with so many styles. I think that's what we're learning here, Matt. And I think that's what we already knew because we talked mm -hmm. about this a lot. Thank y'all for listening because y'all know we were saying this stuff. But, man, it's just fun to sit here and watch. Oh, it's so much fun watching these pundits getting their mic jack on, baby. Just moonwalking on them, baby. They just smoothing, baby. <laughs> they just, oh, man. Well, I didn't know DeRozan. <laughs> Dang. Dang. The moonwalking oh back. Oh my gosh, man. It's um, back, dog. But it's just, it's fun. I'm enjoying this win. I'll forget about it after the, the show and I'll move on. But move on. this win, I'm going to enjoy. I'm going we to got, enjoy. You know, we got Dame, CJ, and, and Nurkic on deck, which is going to be another big test. Um, So, Ooh, yeah. you know, I, I mentioned uh, the, the Anthony Davis ejection uh, real quick. Um, You do not get special treatment. I, I've seen some refs give it like to star players who are like, "Oh, my shoe's untied. Let me tie, let me tie my shoe before this ball is inbounded." But <laughs> it was like, no, it was the Bulls' ball. The Bulls inbound the ball. And Anthony Davis looks up at the ref like, "What the hell? I'm tying my shoe." And it's like, cool. Would you like to call a time <laughs> about to tie your shoe? Because if not, we're we're playing a game of basketball here. So yeah, maybe the Lakers had a twenty point advantage in free throw attempts last night, but. Good for that ref for tossing AD when he deserved to be tossed. He earned his second tech. You're out. Go home. You lose. Also, LeBron James in street clothes is allowed to come out onto the court and try yeah, and like, what is that? on behalf of Anthony Davis. And street? he doesn't, and they don't even assess an additional tech to the Lakers bench. Agreed. Bull. There's something wrong with that. Bull yeah. low knee. <laughs> Special treatment. Bullshit. He's right. That is special treatment. That is, I mean, there's no other way around that. That's the rule. You're not allowed off the bench. You know what I'm saying? He not even off the He came on the floor. And nobody said a word. Everybody's like, okay, yeah, thanks, Brian. Go, no, nah, bro. Like, no, you you get that technical. That's the rule. We that's what it's supposed to be. In that yeah, in that Lloyd I, I Christmas agree. looking jacket he was wearing. What the hell was that? All right, man. <laughs> See, I'm, every time I'm with you, <laughs> you always go this way. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing with, you know, this is where I tell you when you and Fred are kind of similar. Both of you all be right here, and then y'all both do something, and I'm like, oh, here we go. I'm out. <laughs> Got on the man's I, fashion. I'm not I'm not kidding. It, it, so we're, we're, we're going to go, go watch a game with him on Friday, the, the Bulls Nuggets game with a few other, you know, Bulls podcast fan people. Mm. Fred's going to be there. Haven't seen Fred yeah. in a while. How, I don't think I I've know. seen Fred since his late since his last guest appearance on Outsiders, like a, what oh, two wow. years it's ago. Been that now. long. Okay. Yeah, if he starts talking prophecies, I'm leaving. I'm not. I'm not dealing with that. I just want to go enjoy some pizza, <laughs> some basketball, and I always got to play security when it comes to Matt and, and Fred. Oh man. Oh, oh I'm not gonna pick a fight. Fun. I'm not gonna. Pick, I'll just. I'll just get up and walk away. Oh, seven this, seven that, seven, 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 seven. <laughs> I'll be like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> See y'all. You know it's gonna happen, Matt. Matt, it's gonna happen, and you're gonna you're gonna yell, <laughs> and it's and I'm just gonna sit back and eat pizza and and try to enjoy myself. <laughs> Luckily, there'll be more people around me, so I'm, it won't uh, just be on me. So I'll I'll be okay. I'll be all. Right. Oh, see, I I am never the type of person to cause a scene in a bar, or a public or a restaurant, public place. No, that's oh, not me. No. It's absolutely no, it's within Fred's mo to make a scene. It's not Matt. It's not the dude getting kicked out of Madison Square Garden. It's not what he does. <laughs> it's not. No, no. That's just called. That's scenes. not. I wasn't making a scene. The Madison Square Garden security guards are the one who made the scene, Dave. <laughs> I was minding my own business. Were you now? <laughs> just a little bit. A little bit. All right, let's get out of oh here. Um, thanks all for listening. <laughs> Hit us up uh, on on Twitter this week oh, if you want to talk anything Bulls. Uh, we are at Bulls underscore Peck at Bow B W L Sports and at Locked On Bulls. That text and voicemail lines there for you too. Three three one nine seven nine one three six nine. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. We got Bulls Blazers on deck Wednesday night, Game Four. 
the Bulls two and one on this West Coast road trip after the LA sweep. Mm. That's Big Dave. I'm Matt. See Red. Be good, everybody. Peace out.